Hi everyone, this is a creative design team project for Tracy Fox. Links to Tracy's shop, social media and digital kits used will be linked below, as will a link to the Foxy creative design team. Hope you enjoyed this video. I need to make some embellishments and pockets and that sort of thing to put in my owl journals. I have some of these that have been sitting around for ages. I think I got them maybe from Spotlight or somewhere, really cheap, a couple of packets of these. And I love these little closures as we all do in our journals. But what I don't like about them is they usually create a problem for the other pages. And they leave dents in them and that, which really do annoy me. So I've got to be careful where I put them. So I think for this project, I'm going to remove this piece. And I will show you why. If you have a look on the back of these, I hope you can see, but there's dents even in these little envelopes. And that is just from them being in the packaging together. And I don't want that happening to the pages in my journal. Also, they create a problem if you're trying to write on the pages that sit on top of these, if you've got them in your journal. So I don't think I do want them. So I'm going to chop them off. I'm going to keep them though because I can make another pocket with these pieces. I make interesting little pockets in other journals where I won't mind a bit of bulk. So what I will do is chop them. I've got some of my fancy shaped scissors here. These are ones I use to do stamp edges on big stamps that I cut out of book pictures. I'm just going to cut on an angle like this. just like that and so this will make a neat little pocket just like that which I think will be quite quite interesting so I'll hang on to that for another project and this will be a pocket so that will probably sit on a page like this Got some water on my hand just wash my hands just wipe that off waiting for my dinner to cook and I am starving. So we're gonna embellish the pocket later. And I'm gonna leave the holes there as well and I'll probably utilize them to attach this to a page for something different. And I wanna make some bookmarks, I think, to put in my pockets. So I have a kit page here and I think we'll utilize this section and embellish that and make two bookmarks out of that. So I want to figure out how big I would like my bookmarks firstly. So I will grab my pencil. Now height wise, I think we will make it just the height of where this cream part is, looks pretty good. So I know to cut it off about there. So it's mainly the width. So I don't want it, I want it to sit in this area here and not go over where the holes are. So we'll get the two out of this section quite easily. So what I might do is just measure that. Now, my cutter is centimetres and inches. Amazing. So I can measure in centimetres. So much stuff on my desk here. So six would work out perfectly. So we'll do six centimetres. So I don't need my ruler now. Got my huge cutter here. We've got a six centimeter mark there. Now this is my newest cutter. It's a Fiskars um, and it has the rotary blade in it. So it's one of the self sharpening ones, I think, which is great. I got this specifically because I was sick to death of having to replace my blades all the time. And I love it. It's a little bit of an effort to push the blade, but um, it's great because it goes through chipboard and everything. So I will cut 
this about there, I think. And then we want six centimeters. getting a bit easier to push now because I've been using it for a while so that's good. I'll just put my off cuts to the side. So again I'm using the Relic Fragments kit which I love. Now very white on the background so I might actually back it with some we're not going to be able to journal on the back of these well, not on the paper anyway because I will be laminating these ones oh that's what I didn't account for did I hang on let me get my pocket back I did leave a bit of room I was going to say you want to leave a good centimeter because there will be a border with my laminate. So what I might do is just take at least half a centimetre off of those. As you can see, I'm thinking well today. So what I'll do is put these together. And just take a smidgen off. So we're making them, what are we making them? Should we make them five and a half? Yeah, we probably should. So about five and a half centimetres I'm making these now. Is that going to be long enough? Might be perfect. Yeah, so we can use that to back it. Just some end book page. Stick that down with some glue stick. Okay, so that's the basis of our uh, two bookmarks. out now. Just remembered I forgot my glasses. Oh, there they are. Thank goodness. So I think we'll do some corner rounding. Maybe the seven millimeter one. And before I forget, we will ink. little border down there okay next thing we want to do is grab our focal point which I will just go and get so this is what I have been doing today <laughs> so I'm gonna go through this and find a feather for each if I can out of this lot if not I should be able to find one out of this lot 
Uh, if not, I will grab my craft feathers. But I just recently got this big pile of feathers and I sorted them through and ditched a whole lot of the messier ones. Um, and then I put these out in the sun and sprayed them with some disinfectant spray and let them air. So now they're ready to go. But there's some beautiful ones in there. I think there's a whole lot of chook ones and magpie ones and all sorts. So, um, yeah, but some of these, I think they're chook ones, these ones. I think they look like they could be our ones, so I might try and find a few of them to fit our bookmarks. So I'll have a hunt through, find a few that fits, and then come back. So I picked out a couple of feathers. Hopefully we can make these work. Aren't they just beautiful? And they look so cool on the kit pages. Look at that. Amazing. Now, they are quite bulky down here, so I might cut some of it off, which is a shame, but it will help. So, let me cut off about there. might even snip some of these feathers off so I will grab a tissue to put my bits in I'll do a bit of trimming here Feathers flying everywhere. You'll probably get psittacosis or whatever it is. Yeah, that fits nice. Still a bit bulky, but I don't want to trim it down anymore, so we'll see how we go with that. So that can be the first one. work on this one oh. so that's the other one done now put these ones to the side I'm not even gonna bother stamping underneath or anything because that kit page just looks beautiful perfect for underneath with the script and that that it has on it not the squiggles so now we just want to stick our feather down I was gonna say leaf then <laughs> so I might just grab my tweezers I don't know if they'll help me at all And for this, I'll use my fabric glue. And I will run a bead. down like that let's do on that one on a tissue just gonna mop up a tiny bit of that
hold it in there for a bit for it to set. I don't want to put too much glue around the feathers or it just clogs them up and makes them look wet and sticky in that so it's mainly down the spine that we want the glue to hold and that looks pretty good so we'll do the same with the other one So I've just had a hunt around in my stash of Tracy's labels and in her more rather random mix of labels, I found these. So I thought I'd just finish them off with a piece of each of these. So I think I will use just the 1922 from this one. And the... 32 and a half off of that one because I can and I will ink those so very simple and these were very crookedly cut by my scan and cut Mind a bit of crooked, but not that crooked. where I want it. That will do. Could stick a whole lot more on, but that will do. I was going to put a bigger label down where these circles are, but I just love, I love the effect of it. So I don't think I want anything there unless I do a, hang on. I recently bought myself one of these dymos. I didn't think these um, were made anymore. I remember my parents had these when I was young for labeling things when I went to school, like the Tupperware and stuff. So I recently found these on Amazon. I am an Amazon associate. I will link it down below if you're interested. Click on the link and um, yeah, I do get a percentage. Yeah, I earn a bit of money if you buy one through my link. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, at no extra cost to you. <laughs> so pretty cheap. And you can tell it's pretty cheap, but it does work. And I'm having heaps of fun with it. So 
Um, so we'll, we will do a word and we will see if it looks any good on there. So what I like to do is just cut some of the bulk of the black off. chop our words apart feather <laughs> you could even cut the letters apart and do something artistic with them but yeah <laughs> If feather's the only word I can think of, I doubt I'd be able to do anything artistic with them today. Looks alright down the bottom there. So I'm not sure how well these stick. But again, we're going to try laminating over the top. Oh, it feels quite sticky, so it might stick enough until we've got the laminate on. <laughs> the, uh, it'll do. It could have gone up the top too, but not off that one very well. Oh, look, I'm just having fun using the thing, so it's going on, and that's it. <laughs> okay. So they are uh, journal cards. Now I could, if I wanted to, text and put something on the back, which I could have done, but I'm not going to bother. Um, can't really journal on them as they are because we are laminating both sides. I have heard of people doing single side laminating. I must check that out sometime, but I think that would be impossible with something that's got this bulk on it um, because I do have, leave a border of the laminate around these um because yeah it doesn't tend to stick too well if i don't because of the bulky things that i have on there creating air pockets i suppose so i'll just go and get a laminate sheet to show you so here is my laminate sheet it's an a4 size you can get all sorts of different sizes now it's two pieces of this plastic materials put together one side is stuck together, the rest is open. So if you find the sides, you can open it up like that and you'll see they're joined together up the top here. So when you feed it into the machine, you want to feed the joined side first into the machine. So what I will do is put one of my bookmarks just there. A bit of distance in between because I can put another one just there and then you just close it down I'll take it to my laminator and feed it in with the closed end first put it through now I'll probably find one or two things to put in down the bottom here because I hate wasting the stuff I have heard people say they work better if you cut the laminate off first to size and put your things in it but 
I don't know. I also hear you have to put this joined end in first and I don't like wasting all this other stuff so I tend to fill the sheet up a bit and put it all in at once. So that's what I'm going to do and we'll see how it works out. So here are my laminated bookmarks and I just stuck some leaves in there that I found in a bag of things I got from Marketplace. <laughs> so there are a fair few bubbles in my sheet and because of the bulk of the feathers, it didn't seal completely well, which was expected on this side. This one's a bit bubbly. This one's not too bad. It's mainly bubbly down here. What I think I'll do is cut them out and then sew it around the edges. I want to keep them sealed. It's just a bit smoother when I'm putting the... Um, bookmarks in and out of the pocket and it preserves the feather a bit better as well so um, you can't read my little labels as well but that's all right sometimes I'm not sure if my laminator heats up well enough the first few goes or whether it's a very good laminator or whether it's just me but I do have a few problems with it here and there. Sometimes it works really, really well, and other times it doesn't. It's a bit hit and miss, but that's all right. So we will cut the bits and pieces out. I worry about the leaves another time, so we'll just um, cut out uh, bookmarks for the moment. So I'll use my old cutter for that. Well, I will for these straighter edges anyway. So I might take that to the top. Put this where we want it. Not leaving a margin of the plastic overhanging. Now, if it's real bubbled up, that can come apart, but it's holding all right for now, so that's good. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is corner around. Now, this doesn't tend to work very well, but we can cut off what doesn't work. So again, we'll do the seven millimeter. That didn't work too bad. Probably not very good for the corner rounder. But. Grab my little scissors and I'll just neaten that up a little bit. So let's see how they're going to fit into our pocket here. Yeah, they're going to fit fine in there. Just right. So now we have to do something with our pocket. So we'll put our bookmarks to the side and I will grab some paper and I want a bit of gesso for that. So I just want to put a coat of gesso, paint it roughly. Just leave it at that. 
Right, I will go and clean up my brush and let that dry for a bit. Okay, now it's time for some ink smushing. Now, unfortunately, I only have two oxides. I must get some more oxides. So we will be using some inks as well. So I've got black sort, ground espresso in inks, and then in oxides I have forest moss and walnut stain. So I think we'll start with our black soot ink. Just get some of that on here and there. enough for that side I might just do the one side for now um, and got some of these bits of paper I'll just mop it up with some of that I think Quite like that so I'm gonna let this dry and then I think I might go back in with some of my inks just to darken some areas up and then I think that will be lovely so oops my paper's getting quite soggy here get some brown on there be able to use this for some collaging These are going nice in my frog journal, actually, with that green. So the pocket's pretty well dry. I even put more layers of green and brown on, and whenever it dries, it you just can't see it much, and that's all right. I kind of like the way it looks anyway for what I want. So I'll open up my journal, and this is the page that we did in the first video and then I've got a scrapbook piece here of cardstock so that fits the whole way around there because it's 12 by 12 so I want to add my pocket it will be added to that page just there I think that will look nice so now I want to decorate it just a little bit so we're going to stick our little bookmark. Now I did go and sew around these just so they don't come apart because of the bulk of the feather down there and they look kind of nice sewing around like that. So that's going to fit in like that and then I'll probably tie it to the page through the hole so I'll hole punch on the page and put some trim or thread through there to tie it onto the page. I think that would be pretty cool. I'm not sure what I'm doing on the other side of the page yet, so I haven't, um, I won't do that just yet. 
until I know what I'm doing otherwise. But that will be my plan. So now we've got to do something with the front of it. It doesn't even need anything done with it. I think that looks awesome. And because of the lines in it from painting the gesso and that, it almost looks a bit like bark or wood or something. But what I do have is, I have a feather here. Now that is a feather that I stamped onto some craft card stock, just like that, using these feather stamps that I have. And I used archival ink for those. And then I used some alcohol markers just to color in with some brown and black in that. And I really like the way they turned out. So I'm thinking of using one of those on there. I also have one of the labels that came from the kit that I'm using this month, which is the fill-in random label kit, which has all of these brown and black. There are coloured labels as well, but I'm just using the brown and black and that one's in this journal. So I want to use that one, I'm pretty sure. And I am also thinking of using some of my offcuts. These are off-cuts that are printed on photo mat. These I used for a previous project and I printed them with my matte photo setting. So they're a bit darker and richer than um, the ones I've printed for this project. But I'm thinking of using one of these pieces on, on there as well. Might use this one, so we will see. I'm just debating how I want to do it, whether I want to rip it. I might rip it. So, do I want to rip it with my ruler or my hand? Decisions, decisions. I'll just rip it with a ruler for now. So I might rip this piece off. It's a bit crooked. It's all right, we can have it crooked. Yeah, that's nice, I like that. Now, do we want it straight down the bottom? We probably do. So I might cut it along here. And see if we want that down there. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's quite nice. So I can probably cut that off about where that line is. And take that off a little bit more even. around and do we want our little label on there how do I like it without a little label too I think we might forego the label on this and just stick this down because I really love it some glue. Now decide which way we want our feather on there. And I will, I will hunt through my labels. Go the brown one, so at least I made a decision. And let me get my stamp.
I got a bit of a stamp. That's all right. <laughs> That's a bit of interest. I'm sure I have a date stamp somewhere. So I've got this build your own stamp set, which I loathe putting bits in. So I'm going to probably go off camera and just put in there type owl or yeah, something like that or type bird, type owl and date something or other. And then I can stamp that on the label. Okay, so I've got on that owl. 2nd of the 11th, 57. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it anywhere near where I need it. So I thought what I'd do is a sort of template thing. So if I put... Now make sure I've got this up the right way. Put it that way. Yep, that's where we want it. So if I get this where we sort of want the stamping... I reckon about there. Is that straight? Yeah, that's about straight. So if we go about there. And we put this about, that's what it's saying. About there, be over to there for my template, and good luck. Oh, that'll do. I'm happy enough with that. It's a bit like blurry and that because I wriggled it, but you know, it's on there <laughs> and it's readable, so I'm happy enough with that. So, looks looks cool, old, rustic. <laughs> That was a lot of work. <laughs> but I, I like doing these things to myself for some stupid reason. So now I've got that. Do you want something to put under it? Uh, let's see what fabric we've got. Yeah, that's going to be it. don't want all of my cheesecloth little bits here falling off, so just tacking some of them down a bit. Like that. Now we 
can put our leaf on. Decide which way we want it. Yay, so that is it for today, I think. Made our pocket and we've got our bookmark to slip in there. Oh, I know one thing I haven't done is ink around it. So we want to go along these edges. brown on there since the brown ink that we smushed didn't show up and you will be able to untie the pocket if you really wanted to so we will go around the back so you'll be able to untie it and journal on the back here if you really wanted to Now we're finished. So there's my pocket and my bookmark. And then we'll just tie it together with some trim, which I might as well find now. So I'm thinking of using something like this feather trim. So I won't put the holes in the page yet, but just so you know how it will probably look is I will put holes in the page and then thread this through. like so. So on the other side of the page we'll see this bit of the trim. Or on the pocket we'll see that. I'm not sure yet which side I'll tie it off. But then we can do a bow or just a knot or whatever. And it can be like that on the page. I'll probably do a knot or something. I said you might want to undo it sometime, so we'll have to think about that. For now, I'll do a knot anyway. Something like that. And that's going to be our pocket. So I hope you enjoyed that. Take care of yourself and I will see you again soon. Bye.